Welcome to the channel, Annie Collins here for Little Wings Creates. Today we'll be creating this card using the Maker's Movement products. This is a Halloween shaker card. Let's go to the products I use. The new Happy Halloween die set. And this is actually in two pieces, but I'm going to leave it as it is. The spider set, which contains two spider webs and one spider. And this is also new for this uh, fall release. The Versa dies, which are versatile cutting deep etch dies. They cut from heavyweight materials to thin paper, and I'll be using it for cutting our craft foam and for one of our frames. New to the Maker's Movement are 6x6 Tricks and Treats um, Halloween paper pad, and I'll be using one of the papers from in here, and it's this speckled background um, with Halloween colors. So you have one side is more water splat, watercolor splotchy and the other one's more uh, splattered. All right, we'll bring, I'll be using the acetate sheets and ours has a protective layer so they don't get scratched until you're ready to use them. And our double-sided adhesive foam, which is nice and thick. Normally you, you get four in a package and I'm just gonna use one really quick, but I wanna show you how nice and thick they are. You only need to cut it once to create your foam, no doubling up on foam products. Our new shaker sprinkles, the Halloween Carrier and a witch's brew for our shaker bits. And then I have uh, some coordinating cardstock here. So quickly, to I pulled the colors to match our background. So we have this like limey green cardstock. We're gonna create a frame with that. This gray is gonna be for our spider web, black for our spider, purple for our sentiment, and I had this leftover orange, it's like a pumpkin orange. Uh, from the previous pro project <laughs> and I'm going to use that for our card as well. First we're going to start by cutting out our little green frames and that's what I used the Versa uh, dies for and I used it in my crossover edge big um, heavy duty um, die cutting machine that I keep off the side of my desk. Now we're going to bring in our making mini maker to cut out the rest of our pieces. We're going to cut out our sentiment which is the happy Halloween using onto the purple card sock. And that's 65 weight cardstock. I didn't go too heavy with that. I did go heavier with our web and our spider. I used um, 80 pound cardstock for that. So quickly run that through. And then I'll just peel this off. I'm gonna grab my little tray to collect all my bits and pieces. There's our sentiment. Gently remove it. As you can see, it cuts out in two pieces. I just didn't separate my dies. I'm going to set that to the side and grab our spider. Our spider web and spider. So here's our spider web. I mean, like I said, I'm cutting out a heavyweight gray hard stock and our spider. And I'm going to all trim down the piece of our spider hard stock here because it is too large or too wide to go through our mini maker. The mini maker is about three to four inches wide. I'm going to quickly run that through. And once we have that, I'll put that in our little tray as well. Let me go ahead and show you. Here's our little spider. Cute as that. And then our web. And it just those pieces just fall out. And it's a nice thin, dainty web. And it's a corner web. All right. So now I'm going to start bringing in other components to start making our card. Here I'm going to remove our little frames. I'm going to use the piercing tool from the Maker's Movement to quickly push out all our papers. And then the rest of the frames I'll just save for other projects. It's With Halloween, this is a good uh, color to use. All right, so I'm going to move all of this and put my die to the side. And I already pre-cut our acetate and as well as our foam, uh, double-sided craft foam here. So here is what I'm planning on making to do a dry fit and I'm going to grab the wrong frame. <laughs> I'm going to inlay the green frame on through to, onto the orange frame. And that's the second one in. I'm going to put all those extras to the side. And then I'm going to adhere that to our uh, acetate once we're ready. But first, I need to cut down my background paper 
to four and a quarter by five and a half because that's the size card we're doing. It's a standard A2 size card. Once I have that, I can now have all my components ready for our card. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to do a quick dry fit before I grab a white piece of paper for us to work on so it's better to see on camera. So here's my concept. I have the inlaid frames. I'm going to put one of the webs in the corner here, in the left top hand corner, and I'll sentiment towards the right bottom corner. With our little spider, sort of in the center, or as centered as he can be. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to move everything out. I was going to use double sided adhesive, but I decided that I'm going to go ahead and use my Barely Art glue. It works just as fine, and with the um, precision tip on it, it'll be perfect for this. So I'm going to remove one of the protective layers off of my acetate. I'll leave the other side on so it's easier to view on camera while I adhere everything. I'm just moving this little cap. This is the little uh, cap for my glue. It comes from Barely Art and I just use a rubber band on the bottom to hold it so I don't get in the cavity. Ooh, I can speak. So that doesn't go, the tap, top doesn't get caught in the middle of my project. Oh my God, that was horrible. All right. <laughs> um, so now I'm adhering the first layer, which is the pumpkin orange, onto our acetate. And then I'm going to adhere the next frame layer, which is the green one, right nestled right inside that orange one. I'm just doing a little bit of glue, and that's why I want this precision tip glue, because it's perfect to go on these nice thin frames. I'm going to get this in here and lay it. And yep, you saw that? I moved it completely out of the way because that's how I roll. <laughs> Alright, so once I get that adhered nice and flat, I can go ahead and put my tray on it just for a few seconds to let it set. And then I'm going to use the precision tool once again to remove any of those little bits and pieces from my sentiments, which is the inner parts of the E's, A's, and P's, and so forth. So my spider, I'm going to just kind of um, curl up his little legs. And here I'm thinking, oh, would it be cute if I put some of those little eyeballs or in the witch's brew, but the eyeballs are quite large, so I changed my mind. All right, so now this little piece of lighter purple project, purple paper is left over from a, another project. And I thought it'd be nice to use it on, a, which, on the spider's body. So I'm just going to adhere it really quick to the center of his body, clean off any excess glue that's coming out. And I tend to keep little scraps of paper like that that I'm like, oh, that could work for something else. All right, so now I have the Halloween caviar um, sprinkles. And I'm going to use two of them for his eyeballs, and I'm going to use the orange ones. These are much smaller. They fit, more, they fit better in the little head area. I'm just going to get them as centered as I can. And here's a little close-up of what it looks like. I'm going to pour all those beads back before I spill them all over the place. We don't need them just yet. Cleaning up any excess glue that was left over. And here is what my little web is going to be placed here again. So I'm going to adhere this quickly while it's still flat. So I'm going to go ahead and add um, adhesive to the back of our spider web and adhere it to the corner. I'm not going through all those little strings. We don't really need it. We just need to make sure it's secured in the corners right there and just a little tip on that center string. And as it wouldn't be in any project without something being crooked. So keeping true to myself, I had laid down my frames crooked onto my acetate. So I just cut off any extra. Now I remove the backing of the acetate protective layer and I'm going to go ahead and grab our foam uh, frames out here. And I didn't get the backing. It was giving me a little bit of a hard time, but it just came out pretty. It's not that bad. I removed the backing of the protective backing of one of the sides of the double sided foam adhesive here and I'm going to place it on there. And again, not quite centered because hmm, you know, any project. Okay, so now I'm going to pour some of these heavy R beads in here, and that's going to make it nice and um, keep everything moving in there. And then here is the uh, Witch's Brew. It has little bats 
sprinkles and um, eyeballs and I'm just gonna make sure everything is laying flat nothing standing on top of one another I prefer it that way so we can keep nice movement in our card so I'm gonna fiddle with this just a little bit make sure everything's flat and I decide mm, I need a little bit more of the witch's brew so I'm sprinkling in a few more things and then I'll remove the protective layer or backing from this part here, the inside, going slowly so my uh, sprinkles don't pop up everywhere. And I go ahead and adhere the um, pattern paper from the Tricks and Treats die pad. Not die pad, just paper pad. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm going to re trim off the extra paper that's showing because, you know, any project. And I'm going to get that out of our way and go ahead and adhere our spider and our sentiment. For our spider, I want him to be lifted up a bit, so I'm going to go ahead and put a small piece of foam. This is a thinner layer uh, foam, so I'm back in here, foam tab, and I'm going to place that on the back of, of his body, then a little um, barely art glue on the tips of his feet or legs his legs not beat <laughs> and his little web that he's coming down on put that as centered as possible press the feet onto the acetate and then I'll cut off the extra in a bit now we're going to go ahead and add here our sentiment and I'm going to start with the Halloween first I grab my precision um, tweezers here put little dabs of adhesive on the back and adhere it to our card all the way here to the right bottom. Once I have that down, then I can put the happy on there. And I like that you have a little bit of that green and orange popping out of the through the um, Halloween sentiment. And then I'm going to place the happy right nestled in here. Press that nice and firm. I'm going to go ahead and fold my card base. I forgot to do that ahead of time. I usually do that ahead of time. So this is a five and a half uh, by eight. And, I'm sorry, eight and a half by five and a half card uh, piece here. And I'm going to score it at four and a quarter to create our card base. All right. So here is the. Card, the shaker topper is already done. I'm adhering it to our card base, making sure it is as straight as possible. I cut off the extra uh, string that's hanging off of the spider. And now we're going to use some of our Halloween Witches Brew shaker sprinkles to <clears throat> decorate our card. I'm going to put a little bat on the corner here with a little orange sprinkle and a little purple eyes and they have like different shapes little not shape sizes so I'm going to put one bigger one and one smaller one near her the H my little orange sprinkle over here by the Y and by the spider web I will put a black and green little sprinkle now we have some decorations on the outside as well as the inside all right let me get all this closed up but not of our way and here is our card you can see all those little things in there. So much fun. So caviar beads are moving everywhere. We have a little static inside, so our eyeballs are sticking to the um, acetate, but eventually they'll fall down. Again, we use our acetate, a double-sided craft phone, our Versadize, the new 6x6 pad called Tricks and Treats, the Spider set, and the Happy Halloween die set, and our shaker sprinkles. Like always, I'll have everything listed in, in the description box below with links. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you found some inspiration. Mm -hmm.